Amen. Amen. That's a bad man. Amen. 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 Psalms chapter 121. Psalms chapter 121, verses 1 through 8. The grass withers, and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Bible reads like this. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence it come my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth Israel will neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from thy all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to give for our message on this morning, hold on, help is on the way. Hold on. Help is on the way. The superscription to this psalm tells us that this is a song of degrees. That is, this is a psalm that worshipers would sing as they made their way to Jerusalem to participate in three great annual feasts. Those three feasts were the Passover. And then you had Pentecost, and then you had the Feast of Tabernacles. With that in mind, it is plain to see that this is a pilgrim song. It tells of the dangers of the journey and of the help God provides along the way. Verse 1 is not a declaration of hope, but rather it is a cry of despair. The psalmist is telling us that danger is lurking in the hills above and is waiting for an opportunity to pounce on the weary traveler. When this happens, where can the pilgrim turn to for help? The psalmist answers his own question by reminding us that the Lord is our help. May I remind you this morning that we are all pilgrims in here this morning. You that are watching this morning, you ain't nothing but a pilgrim passing through barren land. Your pilgrimage began with the moment you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it will continue until we step out of this life and into the next life. Now, my, what, my, what glory awaits us when we finally get home one of these days? Along the way, however, there are dangers lurking all around us. Where there are dangers all around, there are thieves that would rob us of our peace, that would rob us of our joy, that would rob us of our victory. There are sins that would quench the fire of God that is within our spirits. There are problems that would strip us of the glory and power of God. I don't know about you all, but I have been through difficult times in my life already and times when danger surround my life and I wonder where my help was going to come from. You might be there this morning and you're in something that you're going through right now and you're saying, man, I don't know. Is it going to get any better? Where is my help going to come from? I came to tell somebody this morning, hold on, your help is on the way. Just hold on and God will in due time provide you the help that you are standing in need of. Now let me encourage you with this psalm this morning because if you are struggling this morning or you are just aware that problems might be just around the corner, then this, my brother and sister, is a psalm for you this morning. Now, now let's join the psalmist for a few moments as he tells us about a source of help that is greater than any problem that we could ever have. In these verses, we will find help for the journey. Notice the truth revealed here as we think on the thought, hold on, help is on the way. Number one, remember that God is the source of our help. 
He is the source of all of our help, for he is our creator. He made us. He created us. He made us. The psalmist knew that his help would not come from the hills. In times past, the hills had been places of idolatry. And the hills had been places of false religions. And no help would come could be found out of the false thing. And the psalmist turned his attention to the Lord. He knew that the real source of his help was the almighty God. He isn't referring to a friend or even to an ally, but to the creator of the universe. The idea is this. If God can make this world, then surely he has the power to take care of us as we live in this world. I believe I'll say it again. If God got the power to create this world, then surely God has the power to take care of each and every single one of us as we live and operate and move and navigate through this world that we're living in. What a truth it is that our helper is none other than the very one who stood on nothing and called everything to be as it is. Before there was anybody around to witness, before there was anybody around to testify of his glory and of his goodness, he was still God all by himself. And that's where our help comes from. He is able to help us. Because he is our confirmer. What do you mean? The, ver the verse tells us, in verse number three, it tells us that the Lord will not allow our foot to slip. It says he will not allow our foot to slip. God knows how easy it is for you and me to slip into sin and discouragement. He knows how easy it is. He knows how easy it is for us to slip into the snares of the enemy. Yet we must remember that he is ever with us and he has promised to sustain us in, with his presence and by his mighty power. Now, we see that in Hebrews 13, 5 and Matthew 28 and 20. We, we need to remember that the Lord has never made a house that failed. He has never made a foundation that crumbled. You ain't got to worry about the big bad wolf coming along huffing and puffing and blowing down anything that Christ has built. He said in his word, thou Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not even be able to prevail against this foundation that I am building. What do you mean, preacher? The church is going to be around. The church is not going to cease, but the church is going to be here and we're going to be awaiting our Messiah when he comes back to take us on. He's coming back to receive his own. Now, there will be times when we feel like giving up. Just be real with yourself. You feel like giving up a time or two in your life. And, and, and we feel like not only giving up, but we feel like giving in. But we need to realize that he has lifted us out of the miry clay of this world and has established our goings. We are constantly being reinforced and helped steady by the mighty hand of God. We see that in, in what the psalmist said in Psalms 40 and 1 through 3. Now what this means to us is that we can count on the Lord to help us out along the way. You ain't never by yourself. You always got somebody by your side that is able to help you. In fact, the New Testament depicts the Lord as in the person of the Holy Spirit as the comforter. He comes to comfort you. What did Jesus say? He said, I will not leave you comfortless, but how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall God come and guide you into the knowledge and into the truth of all things. How be it when he. So how can you say that the Holy Spirit is a it, that it is an object, that it is a thing? When the Bible says that how be it when he, the Holy Spirit, is the third personality of deity in the Godhead. He is an intelligent being. Therefore, an intelligent being will not have you to make a fool out of yourself. He will not have you doing backflips and cartwheels and foaming at the mouth and all this hubba bubba max doing all that kind of stuff because he is an intelligent being. He is the comforter. John 16 and 13 and he is pictured as the one who comes along beside us to offer help and assistance when we fall in hard times as we're going along this journey. Now, he helps us to keep on standing for the Lord. 
He gives us the strength that we need to be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. He is, get this, our constant helper. He is our constant helper, meaning he didn't just help you at one point in your life and say, okay, you didn't use up your privileges, you didn't use it up, now I'm on to the next person. But he is there constantly, day in and day out, 24-7, 365, he is right there by your side, walking with you as you go through the fires of this life. That's why you come out the other side smelling like smoke, no, not smelling like smoke. It wasn't because you were so great or you were so powerful or you did something that that was so wonderful, but it was because when they looked in the fire that you were walking in, there was a fourth man walking around in the fire looking like the Son of Man. And at times, we can't even see God. We can't even trace him. He is right there by our side helping us with what we're going through. You remember the story where it talks about, you know, well, well, what about the time where I only saw one set of footprints in the sand? He said, that's why I carried you. Because we get to certain places in our life that we just can't make. Y'all know we got to sit down. We got to take a rest. Lord, I'm weary. Lord, I'm worn. I need your help. I need your assistance. And God has to come along, and he has to help us along on this journey. We got help from Christ. He is our constant helper. Now, not only does the Lord know that it is easy for us to slip, but he also knows that it is easy for us to sleep. There are times when we grow weary and we just want rest. Sometimes you get tired and you just want rest. There are times when, when, when we let down our guard and, and, and get caught napping. But not so with the Lord. He is ever awake and he is ever active on our behalf. Now, he doesn't weary it. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't worry. He doesn't, he doesn't fall asleep at the switch. Therefore, there is no need for us to worry about God. There's no need for us to fret. There's no need for us to lose one moment of sleep at any time because of this problem or because of that problem. Where well, if you be real with yourself, you can't even change the problem. Why worry about something that you can't change in the first place? Put it in the hands of God and let him make it better. No need for us to worry. God is ever awake and he is constantly on the job. What a blessing it is to know that we can depend on that man. We can depend on him. Now, back in the days of, of World War II, when the Germans were, were, were bombing London, it was. They were bombing London all night, every night. And, and, and after, after one terrible attack, they came and, man, it just, the people of London began to search through the rubble, looking for the dead family members, looking for their belongings and things like that. And, and they had recovered everybody except this one lady. And they was looking around for the lady. They said, has anybody seen Mrs. Smith, we'll say. We, 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 ain't nobody, ain't nobody, ain't no, we, we haven't seen, we haven't seen Mrs. Smith. So they went over to Mrs. Smith's house, and, and, and to everybody's surprise, Mrs. Smith was in her bed, sleep. And they were shocked, and they said, well, Miss, Miss Smith, how could you sleep with all these bombs dropping all around you? And to their surprise, she answered, well, the Bible says that he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor summers, so I decided to go to sleep and just let him take care of the problem. He protects us even from our enemies. This verse, verse number five and six, they tell us that the Lord is the shade upon our right hand. In ancient times, warriors carried two items if they were going into battle. One was a sword and the other was the shield. Now, normally the shield was carried by the left hand. And the sword was carried by the right hand. Now, this meant that the right side was vulnerable to attack since it did not have a shield of protection upon it. Now, the psalmist is telling us that God takes up a deliberate defense position to protect us when we seem to be the most vulnerable. We never know from where or what area we are going to be attacked, where it is going to come from. Sometimes we find ourselves attacked in areas where we are weak. 
Our enemy knows all about our weaknesses. He knows all about that. Other times we find that we are attacked in areas that we seem to be the strongest. Elijah is renowned, for world known for his courage. Yet he fled from a woman named Jezebel. Moses' greatest strength was his meekness. Yet in anger, he struck the rock and was forbidden to enter the promised land. Abraham's greatest strength was in his faith in the Lord. Yet he went into Egypt in pure unbelief. The whole point is this. We will be attacked. And we will never know where the attack will come from. But it never catches God off guard. He is always ready to shield us and protect us when we find ourselves in harm's way. He protects us from the elements. Now, in, in, in the verses, verse number six especially, it says that the psalmist speaks of, of, of two sources, that harm that were, that were common to the ancient soldier. One was a sunstroke. And a, a dangerous condition where the body became overheated and just shut down. And, and, and this con condition could be fatal. The other was moonstroke. Believed by the ancients to be just as dangerous. Moonstroke, unlike sunstroke, did not affect the body, but it affected the mind. Did not affect the body, but it affected the mind. And in ancient times, mental illnesses was thought to be caused by the moon. They thought the moon caused mental illness. And this is where we get the word lunatic to refer to someone who has a mental disturbance. The whole idea is this. The whole idea is this. While we are subject to attack in our lives, we are also subject to attack in our bodies and in our minds. We are subject to attack. However, just as God will guard us against the attack of the enemy from the outside, he will guard us from the attack on the inside as well. Now, now whether the attack is open or secret, whether it comes from the day or it comes from the darkness by night, be sure that God is aware of where you are and what is happening, and he will always be there to protect you. He will always be there to guard you on your vulnerable side. Our greatest gift in troublesome times is that we got him that we can run to. That's the, great, that's the greatest strength. The greatest strength is not your knowledge. The greatest strength is not our attainments and what we have acquired. Our greatest strength is that when we find ourselves in trouble, we can run to the rock. That the builders rejected, but he has now become the head of the corner. That's who we got somebody that we can run to. Now, now, because he is our help, we are preserved from evil. We are preserved from evil. These bodies are much like volcanoes. At any moment, the sin that is pent up in us can burst forth. And we can commit sin unimaginable. This flesh that we carry around is utterly depraved, Romans 7 and 18. And how can we ever hope to live for God? The answer lives in the spirit of God where we can obey his gospel. Because the spirit, the Bible says, is the one that reveals the word to a person. We must obey his word in order to even get on his side in order to even get on his team because recognize though all throughout your life even before you came to that point God was watching over you the Bible says it this way he causes rain to call down on the just as well as the unjust Peter found it out this way at the house of Cornelius I perceive 
that God is no respecter of persons. What are you saying, preacher? God doesn't have a, 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 a top 100 of his servants. He doesn't have a select group of people that say, hey, okay, you are better than that person. You are better than that person. But the Bible categorized us all together when it said that all of our goodness, all of our righteousness is but filthy rags before the eyesight of God. You have not worked enough. You have not done enough. You have not sung enough. We have not preached enough to earn anything from God. Everything that we get, get from him is only by his grace. And only by his mercy. Us being here at this very moment is all because of his grace and all because of his mercy. Now, 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 when, when, when we come to faith, when we obey the gospel call, Christ comes to live in us. That is, that is what it's talked about, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Christ comes to take up residence in your life. But Christ cannot dwell in an unclean house. He cannot dwell in a house that is defiled and rank. God has to dwell in a house that is clean. You, you know, if, if you got a letter, a letter from God himself and say, hey, I'm coming to your house. Do you know how clean your house would be? I mean, man, it, I mean you, you would go out and get cleaning services to come in and say, hey, man, the, the Lord is coming to my house. We got to be ready. Y'all take your shoes off when you come in. The, the Lord is coming into this house. We will go out and we get it ready. That same way you prepare for the physical house, you got to prepare for the spiritual house. Make sure that you and yourself is a vessel that is cleaned up and is in the position that God can live on the inside of you, that God can work and operate in your life. He's come to help us, y'all, in whatever we are going through. He has come to help us. He has come to aid us. He has come to say, hey, man, you know what? You don't even have to worry about how things are going to work out. Your job is to trust me and who I am and what I have the power to do and know that I am going to take care of that situation for you. The Lord is mine. Help. He's my helper. He's my aid. In times where I lack, he takes up the slack. In times where I don't have enough, he shows up and he makes it more than enough. Any, anybody in here ever been at a point where, 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 where this is just, this is just a, a, a play on words, but God, God made you make a penny last a month? God, 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 God took what you thought to be insufficient, what you thought to be minute, what you thought to be not enough, but you gave it to God and trusted him with it. And God, beyond a shadow of a doubt, blowed your mind and showed you just what he has the power to do. Let me tell y'all, that same faith that we have in God, when we need things from him, we got to have that same faith from God on throughout our life. Because let me tell you, Satan, our adversary, as I said, he is out there. He is on his job. He is after you. He's after you, not just on Sundays, but on Monday, all throughout the week, on your job, in your home, through the television, through the radio, everywhere you go. Satan is there. He's trying to attack. He's trying to get in your mind, trying to get in there. Creep doubt and uncertainty in your mind. He's trying to shake your faith in Christ, but having done all to stand, we got to keep on standing on the word of God because if you stand on his word, I'll tell you something. You got a sure foundation. You got a sure foundation, and the winds can blow as hard as they want to. The rains can fall down as hard as they want to. You got a solid foundation if you're standing on God and if you're standing on his word. Because his word, even after this world as we know it, is gone and done away with. Guess what's still going to be standing? His word. His word is still going to be standing. And you know that day that you yourself stand before God? You know what's going to judge you? It says it's going to be a book. And it says it's going to be another book are going to be open. And you are going to be judged by the things that are written down in this book on that great judgment day. Now, for, those, for, for so, some that ha have a misconception, nobody that has died up to now is already in heaven. 
nobody that has died. So at the funeral, when they say, oh, I know she up there dancing with the angels and oh, walking down the streets to go, there is nobody that has died that is already in heaven. When a person leaves this earth, your body, your spirit, it goes back to the God that gave it. God puts it in what we call a holding place until that great day of judgment when we are all going to stand before Christ to be judged by the things that we have done in this body, those things good and those things bad. He said that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Y'all, it's going to be a great, what they say, getting up morning. When the dead in Christ shall rise. I, y'all, and let me tell you, I, the song said, I want to be in that number. I want to be counted among the faithful. I want when God comes back, when he does an inspection on my life, well, he don't have to do an inspection because he already know everything about me, know my going to, from my going from, my uprising, from my down setting. He already knows everything about me, but I sure hope that when the Lord comes back, he can look at me and say, well done. Ain't that what we're working for? Ain't that what we're living for? If you're not living for that, then what are you living for? If you're not coming here for that, then what are you coming here for? We're coming here so that we can get what we need to make sure that we make our journey. Because we all know that this pilgrimage has a destination. All of us pilgrims traveling on this road, we know that ultimately we're trying to get to that destination that he tells us. In John chapter 14, he said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas looked at him and said, Father, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, you're looking at the way. You're looking at the truth. You're looking at the life. No man can come to the Father except he come by me. How can you come by him? He has given us a door. What door has he given us? He has given us a means. What means has he given us? He's given us a method that one can come through the door, and that is through baptism by faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is what adds one. That is what puts one into the body of Christ, not a, 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 a recitation of some words that you have memorized not a prayer for sinner but it is the bible says that baptism doth now save us confession is good confession is a part in the process for one's souls to be saved but one cannot just confess the lord jesus and believe that god has raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved water is necessary for one's soul to be washed away for your sins to be done away with for you to become a new new creation in Jesus Christ for old things to be done away with and for all things to become new God got away you can't get around it you can't go over it. you can't go under you got to come in at the door he said if anyone will come he said open the door he said I'll come in and I'll sup with you I'll come in, he said, and I'll make my abode with you. He comes in to make the difference in your life. Because up until now, you've been working everything on your own, and you've seen how this worked. God says, now that you've surrendered your will and your way to me, you, 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 you've been washed, your, your sins have been forgiven, you're now following me, now you got help. Now you got help for those dark days ahead. Because let me tell you, you don't just experience a dark day in life. We have dark days. Y'all know, look, some people have dark weeks, dark months, dark seasons. We all have those moments. But God says, you know what? Even in those times, I am here. I am your help. I am your strength. I am your comforter. I like another way where the psalmist said that as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, that's the same way God protects us. The rain is coming down. That mama, she spread out them wings. And, 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 and she don't have to say, hey, y'all, come on up here. They already know when mama spreads her wings, it's time for us to go on up under here and get some shelter. So we as children of God, why can't we have the sense of a baby chicken? 
Why can't we have the sense of a baby chicken? We look out in this world right now. We sit look at seeing all kinds of dangers going on. All kinds of things are happening right now. We as the children of God, we need not worry, but we know where we ought to run to, where we ought to go to in the time of trouble. Our help is not going to come from a government. Our help is not going to come from any type of order or system, but our help is going to come from the Lord God of heaven. That's where our help comes from. Our help cometh from the Lord. So in those times of despair, in those times of uncertainty and worry, hold on. Help is on the way. Hold on. Hold on. Give it just a minute. Don't be weary in your well-doing. For in due season, y'all know we got all kinds of seasons. We got winter, we got spring, we got summer, we got fall. I don't never hear nobody talk about autumn, but it's out there too. But we got all of those seasons, and we know about what time of year you can expect those seasons. But due season is all year round. Due season is 24-7. Due season is 365. What is due season? Whenever God decides to do what he is going to do, it is going to be due season. You can just admit, man, that's a check that you can take it to the bank and you can cast it that the Bible says that God will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. When you do wrong, God is right there waiting on you. When you make a mistake, God is right there waiting on you. When you trip up, God is right there waiting on you. When you mess up, bad. God is right there waiting on you. Other people have written you all, said you're worthless, you amount to nothing, but God still says, I am your help. I am your help. I am your help. So, so as children of God, as children of God, we are people of faith. We are people of faith. We're people of faith. And, and our faith tells us, faith tells us that even when we don't understand, he knows. Even where we can't see, he sees. Even where we can't understand, he understands. So I got a question for us this morning. Where, as, as uh, 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 for any of y'all ever heard, James Cleveland, he sang a song, where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? I, mean, I, I just love that song. The conversation he was having, man, he said, you say you got a problem? Tell me about it. I know somebody that can help you with the problem. I know somebody. And, and, and as Christians, as, as instruments of God, you know what our job is? Right now, as this world is in turmoil, as this world is in chaos, our job is to take this message of hope, to take this message of redemptive love made personal in the person of Jesus Christ. We got to take this message out there and ring it out from the mountaintop, yes. from the highways, from the byways, from the hedges. Everywhere you go, let them know about the man that helped you. Yes. So when they find themselves between a rock and a hard place, it's kind of hard for them to get out. They say, I, I can hold on. Help is on the way. Help is on. Help, help, help is on the way. Help, hold on. Give it just a little bit more time. Any, any of y'all ever, any y'all ever experienced this? You gave up too soon. And you're like, man, if I would have just hang on just a few more days, look at how this thing would have been. But as people, we get anxious. We get anxious, and especially when things ain't looking how we want them to look. Man, we get anxious, and what we want to do is we want to not intervene, and we want to do what we ask God to do for us. Why ask God to do it if you're going to go out there and try and do it on your own anyway? You know, it's an insult to God to ask him for something. You don't believe he got the power to do it. What has he not done in your life? So far, that is evidence at any, at any gesture that he will not show up and provide help. Just because he doesn't always do it the way we expect it. Or when we expect it. Through whom we expect it. Because it doesn't always happen like that. Listen, 
when you ask God for something, it's not your job to worry about the details. When you ask God for something, it, it, it's, not your, it's not your job to know, okay, when he going to do it, how he's going to do it, who he's going to do it with, how long it's going to last, when it's going to end, when it's going to begin. It's not your job to worry about any of that. Your job is to say, hey, Father, it's yours. I'm going to let you handle it. Not my worry. It's not for me to worry about. I'm going to put it in your hands now. Lord, handle that for me. Fear creeps in about we fighting viruses and things. Some you can't even see. We run, it, it got us in fear. Some you can't even see got you scared to come out your house. Some some you can't even see got you cleaning like Mr. Clean. Some some you some you can't even see got you doing all of that. But he can see it. You know what? He saw it when it was on the way, and he know when it's gonna be on his way up out of here. We don't, but he knows. And since we know the man that got it all in control, let's trust that man. Let's trust him. Let's trust him. A uh, 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 man in the audience preached a sermon one time, said, O.J. can save the world. Only Jesus can save the world. Only Jesus can help us in the current condition that we are going through right now. Don't, don't depend on no president, no governor, no mayor, no senator, no congressman. The, 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 uh, I'm being, we already know. They tell us what we want to hear to get a vote, and then don't hold up their end of the bargain of what they said that, that, that was going to happen. That, that, that's how it always happened. But I read somewhere, Isaiah said it this way. It said that the government is upon his shoulders. Meaning, ultimately, it's not up to them. It's up to him. And if he say nay or yay, that's going to be his decision. So let's trust God. Let's depend on him. Let's stop planning, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, and start saying, if it's the Lord's will. If it's the Lord's will, I'll go and do such and such. I'll go to such a place and I'll do such a thing. Because if it ain't in his will, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to work. One, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, commit to the Lord whatever you do. Whatever, whatever you're planning, whatever you're doing, commit it to God. In a relationship, you got to commit it to God. In a family, you got to commit it to God. Your job, your fight, everything you got, everything you own, commit it to God. Lord, it's yours. It's in your control. Handle it for me. Handle it for me. Y'all, we got help. So hold on, hold on, hold on, Christian, hold on, child of God. Worrying, stressing about, okay, I've been, I've been laid off work. Uh, you know, I, I don't know when I'm, I'm going to go back to the job. But isn't it good that he made sure you ain't missed a meal? Can't, can't you pause for a station identification and say thank you that your lights ain't got cut off? Can't you, can't, can't, can't you pause for a station of identification and thank God that your children are well, healthy, you are well, and you are healthy, that you know where they are, that they are doing well? Can't can, can you thank God that you are still able via the web now to come and congregate with your brothers and sisters? And even though we might miss the fellowship, but being able to have fellowship time and all of that, it's still good that God has blessed us in a way that we're able to come into your house, to come into your car, share with you the good news of Jesus Christ so as you are going through these trying times and these trying days that your spirit does not get weak that you don't become weary in your way of doing but you are continuously being strengthened to know that you got help you got help today you got help he he helped us out before we were even formed he considered us even before the very foundations of this world and he provided a means and a way for us as his creation, as his children. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And even though that is God's desire, it is a known fact. Everybody talking about him ain't going to him. Everybody claiming the name of Christ ain't going to live with Christ forever. Just make sure you're not in that number. Make sure you are counted among the faithful. Make sure you are one of the ones 
that will be caught up with him on that great getting up morning to go home to live with him. Walk down streets that are paved with gold. Drink from the river, the Bible said, flowing with milk and honey. Said there's a tree that sits in the midst of the garden bearing 12 manna of fruit. The walls are made of jasper. Gates are made of pearl. Every day, howdy, howdy, Brother Smith. Never goodbye. Never goodbye. Walk around here all day, singing and praising that glorious name because it is he that is going to help us to make it through this life, to be able to get to the next, to enjoy with him for eternity. Amen. Say amen. So if you're watching us this morning and you are not a Christian, you're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ, we would have you to know that salvation is a free gift, but it came at a mighty high price. It cost our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ his very life. The Bible says that he hung, shed, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for the sins of all mankind, that you and I alike may inherit eternal life. Eternal life. Oh, man, what is better? We enjoy this life. We love this life. We thank God for this life. But what can be better than eternal life with him in heaven forever? Don't you want to be there? Don't you want to be there? Get on the road with him. Get on the journey with him today by hearing his word. The Bible says that for so in faith, come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. After hearing, one must believe that same word that they have heard. Upon belief, after belief, you repent of your sins. Repentance is a change within the mind that shows up as a change in your action. After repentance with the mouth, you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. After confession with your, with, with, with your actions again, you are willing to be baptized with him in the watery grave of baptism. Have your sins washed away, done away with, never to come up before you, and this life and neither the life that is to come. Paul lets us know that if any man and be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Notice I said God will forget it. That doesn't necessarily mean that people will forget it. You'll always have people to remind you of who you were and what you've done, but you yourself know what difference Christ has made in your life. And at those times when you're feeling weak, you feel like you want to revert back to your old self and to your old way, you got somebody that can help you to stand up in the day of testing and in the day of trial. And if you are here today, you're watching your subject, you're standing in the need of prayer, you're already a Christian, but just a Hey, preacher, I'm trying to do good like a Christian should, but I'm struggling. I'm straining. I'm on my way. I'm trying to serve God. We all stand in the need of prayer on this morning. Somebody need him for one thing. Somebody need him for another. But we all need him today. And we're not just going to need him today, but we're going to need him all the days of our life. So if today you're subject to the invitation, we beck and we plead. Don't put off the day for what you're planning on doing tomorrow. But while you have the blood running warm in your vein, while at this moment you have it, why not come to Jesus now? And together we stand and sing the song of invitation.